Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Welcome to MLT413 for subject immunology. So I am Wan Shahriman Yusuf, Wan Yusuf, your lecturer for this uh, subject for this semester. So this is the lecture for week one. So in this lecture, I will talk on the introduction to immunology. So this is the part one of the lecture. Immunology is the study of the immune system and is a very important branch of the medical and also the biological sciences. There is no need to be a doctor or a scientist to wonder why the human body is capable of resisting so many harmful agents in the course of everyday life. This is the famous uh, words from the great Russian immunologist Ilya Makhinov stated in his uh, 1908 Nobel Prize acceptance speech. First, let's uh, look on why the immune system is so important to us. If it weren't for our immune system, none of us would live very long. Not only does the immune system protect us from external pathogens like viruses, bacteria and parasites, but it also battles cells that have mutated due to illness like cancer within our body. Our immune system is being bombarded by all sorts of microbes all the time. Yet, even though we are not aware of it, it's saving our life every day and also doing a very good job of it. So, how in the world do we survive from countless threats? Our immune system is under attack by all sorts of threats all the time. So, of course, since we are still alive today, they are doing a remarkably good job of it. So it can be in the form uh, of external threats from viruses. So now uh, the most uh, popular one, of course, the one that affecting so much on our life, on our daily life today, COVID-19 is a form of virus pathogen. Second, uh, bacteria. For example, Leptospira, uh, which uh, the cause of uh, red urine disease or leptospirosis. And another example from parasites. These are the malaria parasites. Also from internal uh, threats or danger, in the form of cancer cells that coming from our own body. So let's go through a complete immune response in fighting an invader in the lung. So the invader can be in the form of uh, viruses, bacteria, parasites, and they are looking to attack our body all the time, even at the time uh, we are speaking now. Let's go through a complete immune response with an invader in the lung. So before the invader can attack our body, uh, our lung to be specific, so they need to go through our first line of defense in the immune system. So this first line of defense is uh, categorized in the innate immunity. Innate mean we are born with it and they are occur naturally. This is like our natural uh, immunity. So first in the innate immunity, first line of defense, the pathogen or invader need to pass through 
the physical barrier. In this case, if they want to innovate our lung, they need to go through or pass through the nose hair. Yes, your nose hair acts as a natural filter to prevent the entry of uh, viruses, bacteria, dust, uh, pollens from flowers or spores from fungus and so many other things. If they manage to pass through, they still need to face a second physical barrier which is the cilia linings the lung surfaces. Cilia like tiny brooms, they will sweep uh, bacteria, uh, viruses, dust particles from your lungs and airways towards your throat and out of your body. But if this uh, invader still manage to pass through, they will need to face our chemical barrier, our mucus or snot. Yes, the mucins in the mucus form a powerful sticky mesh like a glue trap that the invading microbes get stuck in preventing them from moving any further into the body. But if they still manage to pass through all this uh, first line of defense, we still got the second line of defense. So in the second line of defense, one of the main character is uh, placed by uh, our immune cells, the macrophages, which they will eat the bacteria or the invader. And if the invader is a type of virus, natural killer cells will destroy the virus infected cells. Since these uh, macrophages eat the bacteria or the invader, they will also release chemicals we call as uh, cytokines, which uh, will uh, produce uh, leaky blood vessels and also attract more immune cells to the site of infection. These extra immune cells, we call it effector cells, will amplify the inflammatory response. So, inflammatory response, which can be observed uh, commonly, like sneezing, uh, runny nose, uh, feeling heat and pain all over your uh, face. So, those are a type of inflammatory response. And also, these macrophages will bring a part of the ingest, ingested invader, like a body part of the in, uh, invader or the uh, pathogens. This is called a antigen presenting cells. So the thing that are presenting is the antigen from the invader. So macrophages is a type of antigen presenting cells together with others like uh, dendritic cells and in some cases B cells. So this APC will present the antigen to our third line of defense which is categorized as adaptive or acquired immunity. So in this Third line of defense, we have T cells and B cells as the main character. So in the third line of defense, uh, focusing on the T cells and B cells, first, the bridge between the innate and adaptive. So how innate will activate the adaptive immune system 
is by antigen presenting cells of the ABC presenting the antigen to the T cells. So this process is called as T cell activation. Will uh, ABC will present the antigen to the helper T cell, a type of T cell called as helper T cells. Then the helper T cells will induce the production of antibody by the B cells and also killing of the infected cells by activating the killer T cells and at the same time the adaptive immune uh, response will produce a memory cells we can have we will have memory b cells and memory t cells this is what we call immunity so next time if we our body face the same invader our immune system will able to produce a much much faster response to the same invader or pathogen So while the immune system doing its job, disease symptoms are sometimes the results of your immune system uh, doing its job in the form of inflammatory response. Here you can observe sneezing is one of the response to disease. Disease symptoms sometimes occur because your immune system is reacting to the pathogens, to the virus or the bacteria. For example, take the common cold. Your immune system jumps into action when the virus in, invades the cells of in your in your body upper respiratory tract. Immune systems chemicals called histamines dilate your blood vessels and increase their permeability, allowing uh, chemicals and white blood cells to reach the infected tissues. So we can observe symptoms in the form of uh, commonly uh, most common symptoms uh, nasal congestion or stuffy nose this uh, stuffy nose is caused by dilation of blood vessels increase in their permeability that leads to swelling in the infected areas so this is mainly caused by histamine that uh, being released by immune cells in the infected area and second we will have a runny nose where you will have uh, increased fluid leakage from your permeable capillaries and also increased mucus production also caused by histamine that is being released by immune cells so that is why it is a uh, common it is uh, very common as a common practice uh, if you uh, see your doctor uh, in the case of uh, common cold you will be uh, given uh, an antihistamine pills or uh, ubat selsema yeah, antihistamine pills you also known as ubat selsema in Malaysia uh, to counter the effect of histamine being released by immune cells by using antihistamine and we will also uh, feel uh, the sensation of pain uh, dilation of blood vessels cause swelling uh, migration or influx of more blood cells into the infected areas and also stimulation of pain receptors by kinins the discomfort you feel due to sore throat, congestion, nasal discharge and flame is primarily due to the effects of the immune response uh, not damage from the virus or the pathogen itself.